G'day everybody and welcome to another episode of Hook, Line and Sinker coming to you today, Andrew, from our international test kitchens. We're actually uh, developing a new bait here on the show. Indeed, Nick. We are bait gathering at the moment. Uh, we're not pumping nippers. We'll be doing that later. We've got a bowl. Yep. We've got a cup of flour. Cup of flour. That's being pretty conservative. Write this Probably recipe down time. at home, folks. It's uh, very, very good. A bit of water. Around right about a cup of water thereabouts, in that yeah, goes. Half a mug or so. Then the secret ingredients. Now, this is the secret ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, this is cotton wool. Half a cup of cotton wool. Mm. In it goes, we'll tell you in about that, that later. Here's some ground nutmeg. <laughs> a pinch of ground nutmeg. Yes, yes. Fish love that. This is paprika. <laughs> some paprika in there. Yeah. Of course, uh, you'll want some wasabi. Yeah. Nice and hot. Nick might be getting carried away. In you go so. there with the wasabi. He's always wanted a, a cooking um, show rather than a fishing show. Obviously, right. with this bait, we're using a little bit of the Pinot Noir. Use a good wine. If it's not good enough to drink, it's not good enough to cook with. That's what exactly I always right, say. Exactly right. And then, of course, Andrew, the finishing touch to this is whiskers, uh, cat food. This is the pilchard and whiting variety. Yes, Nick. Yeah. Is it important to use a uh, seafood variety? Oh, no, I don't think so. Whatever no. you like. You know, whatever you prefer, whatever you would eat, mm. pop that into the bait. Mm. Give that a mix up. That smells really good. Okay, so we. Now, what are we going to catch with this? Okay, well, uh, oh, that's, all. That's, that's pretty it. nice. That's beautiful, folks. And all will be revealed after we have the opening credits. And we've hooked a good fish. This isn't a good fish. This is a snap. That's a good big, big, big salt fish. Hold on. Look at that. Okay, folks, welcome to the show, first of all. We're now outside, outside the kitchen, standing in the water. Indeed, Andrew. Our uh, wasabi and cat food bait isn't the only thing we're needing today. We need other bait. That's where that thing comes in handy. That looks like something Austin Powers might use. Yes, Nick. The show's getting kinky, you and your underpants and all. This is a nipper pump, and we're going to catch nippers, Nick. Well, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? <laughs> now, what we're doing <laughs> is just walking along the sand here. You can do it at low tide, and it's probably better. Look at that! Yes, we, we meant to do this at low tide, so we weren't walking in the water in the middle of winter because it's surprisingly cold. But that's what we're after. That is a nippy. A nippy. <laughs> a what? A nippy. <laughs> a nipper or a bass yabby. And you may have seen us catch brim on those in a previous show, but they make fantastic bait. Now, we don't know really what we're going to catch today, if at all anything, but... Probably not. Hopes are high. We've got the right bait. We have. Pump away, my man. All right, good. Sir. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. All right, well, folks, we are on George's Bay, which is nothing new to you. I don't think it really matters where we are, though. It's the type of fishing that we're doing. Today we're going to be fishing for garfish and trevally and whatever else swims up our burly trail. We've anchored it up in about two metres of water. We've got a burly trail of bread going and I tell you the truth here, we have been here I reckon five minutes. Nick has hooked a fish. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> there are trevally swimming around the back of the boat. Now you'll remember our disgusting concoction of uh, whiskers and uh, wasabi and flour. And bits and pieces. Yeah, there's a few. I just rolled a little ball of that up. Unweighted, completely unweighted, just on a hook. Ooh, come here. And you can see that's a little trevally, but actually you can see bigger ones swimming around down there. There are there. some thumpers there down are there. Some big trevally. Oh, got away. That's the one that got away. So this is looking good. As a hardy said, burly. There are fish at the back of the boat. You can see them. Fantastic. Now this, those are serious trevally. Those are really, really good size silver trevally. We're, we're here fishing for garfish. That's what we're going to catch today. But uh, they're well, going to have the gars are going to have their work cut out actually. Uh, I think there are some gars swimming around back there, but there are just hundreds of, of trevally. 
Look at them, they're jumping out of the water here behind. Now that's a better one that you've got there. Oh, this it? is a good one, mate. Yeah. This, like, this, for Silverton Valley, Fantastic. they don't come much better. And we're using these little pen, really lightweight pen outfits today. And uh, on light gear, that is that's a good fish, yeah. as you can see. That's the little nipper that we pumped earlier. Yeah. Now there's bigger ones than this for me down there. But, uh, we're not actually here for those blokes. But I tell you what, we'll have a tasty meal. Beautiful. There's some gars. Are they? Oh, Look at yeah. the size Look of the Look at gars. these gars. Yeah. Alright, well the rig that I'm using is a little size 10 fly hook. You can't really see it in there. That's just with a pinch of our dough squeezed onto the end. Now, all we have to do, I've added a, um, for the fly fishing purist, I've added a little split shot to my leader there to get it down. <laughs> I'll be enjoying this. And basically all you do is throw the whole lot over the side and you can watch the fish come up. He's eating it, he's chewing on that bait. He's trying to get it down. I put a bit too much on there, hoping for a bit bigger gar. Chewing, he's got it. Oh, it came out. We'll just drop it down again. I think that one might have it. Yeah. That's good, Nick. You, you pile the him, cast a dry to him, did you? <laughs> and that is. Oh, come here. Come here. Oh, oh. It's off the hook. That's fly fishing at its most pure form, folks. You're seeing the fish, you're not actually casting to them, you're not actually using a fly for that matter. It's not bad though. It's not that pure then, is it? Oh, it's not hard, is it? It's not hard at all. I'm not sure where our garfish have gone. We might yeah. actually move up a bit shallower in a minute, but uh, we've turned around and done a 90 degree turn. How, how many degree turn? 180 out? degree turn out. There you go, next to the brains of the show. And it's really quite funny because you can see all those little leather jackets, or quite sizable leather jackets, just pop their heads out from amongst the weed down on the bottom. You, you think you can see it all because the water's so clear. Now, this is what they look like. Those leather jacket. Ah, a oh, word of warning. Good fish. Word of warning, yes. Watch the spike. That big one on the top. It's pretty, um, there's also a little one under here. It's pretty self explanatory. Don't get stabbed by it. Mm. Um, unpleasant experience. Unpleasant yeah. experience, yes. Oh, and strong and don't, tooth. Um, Stick yeah. your fingers in their no. mouth. Try and kiss them or anything like that. They've got big choppers on them. That's a, that's a stylish jacket though. Indeed, Andrew, that's the horseshoe leather jacket. Is it? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes, I think I am. Well, well I'm, I don't know. I I'm quite that. amazed that you know that. But, yeah. uh, big nice fish, you can eat. They're not too bad to eat. Yeah. We'll let him go. Yeah. Because, you know, we always do. We're out. Uh, we can't be bothered cleaning it. No. <laughs> The tide has turned and with it has sprung up the afternoon sea breeze. So what we're doing now, because we can't actually see the fish taking the bait, we're putting on a float. Now that's a pencil float and I want to apologise to anybody out there who actually knows how to rig up a pencil float <laughs> because neither Andrew or I has got any idea. We've never used a pencil float. The theory is that you throw it out there and when your float sticks up you've got a fish on the end. I'd like to see that. Right, right. You've got one on hard. Yeah, no, I've got a special oil filled float, Nick. Oil filled float. Lubricated. And how do you know when there's a fish on? Oh I think it, it pokes up. It, it sets off some sort of oh, alarm. I see what she's saying. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Not quite. That was brilliant. Did you see that? No, but if you'll uh... It rode through the water like a shark. We'll uh, focus, get uh, Mike to focus on my float yeah, there. Sorry, mate. And uh, it's waiting, waiting, waiting. It works brilliantly, this. I think this is how you're rigging, though, isn't it? Is it? Uh -huh. I don't know. Look, the float uh, went down. The float went down. It was immediately followed by a prize capture. <laughs> Right. Well, I just oh. got a fish on the float. It's a fish on the float. I think that this one was a uh, was it a mullet? Well, yeah, I think so. Looked to be a few mullet in the trail. Did. They actually scrapped pretty well. 
Scrap's another word for fight. Yes, it is. It's a hook, line, and sinker jargon. Oh. Got plenty. No, I think he's yeah. a mull, oh, eh? Fish. Thanks. Oh, they fight fairly well, they are mullet. Oh. Well, I think we've shown how good Burley is, how good uh, fishing down a Burley trail can be, and uh, well, if you would like to know more, here is a little bit more, and uh, I just suggest you get out there and try it yourself. Give it a go. Yes, it's fact box time, and we can tell you garfish of up to 45 centimetres, that's a bit bigger than the ones we got, are available in George's Bay pretty much all year round. All you need is a calm day, a light burly slick, some dough with paprika in it, and some small hooks. Nothing bigger than size eights, Andrew. No, Nick, that's right. And floats are another option you may like to keep in mind. It's also worth noting you can catch gars in most estuaries around the state. Just find some shallow water and start burling, because you never, never know if you never, never go. Look at him go! Oh! Welcome back to Hook, Line and Sinker, folks. We now interrupt the program to take you live to a breaking story on the banks of the Smithton River. Andrew Hart has the latest. Yeah, that's right, Nick. It's actually the Duck River down here, mate, but uh, we won't worry about that. The big news, we're off fishing. Okay, folks, well, we left Smith and it was lovely and calm. We came over to this place. It's called Three Hummock Island. It's about 30 k's out of Smithton. Stewie Smith, the Smithton Flash. Have a look at yourself. <laughs> look at this. The get up. What's this all about, mate? That's me warm clothes. Like we, we did, we copped a little bit of Eastley on the way over today, but we're dressed for the day. So yeah. we'll see how we go for the rest of the day. You are dressed for it. I wish I was wearing those clothes. But this is, as I said, Three Hummock Island, a, a pretty remote wilderness, mate. We've got Cape Barren Goose on the beach. Yes. What are we going to catch here? We would think we'll catch the odd yummy shark. There's some, we know that there's some good salmon around the corner. And we'll get out of the east. We'll go around the back of the homestead here and uh, we'll, we'll get stuck into them. I think we'll have a productive day. All right, a productive day. Perhaps a bit of a mixed bag here on Hook, Line and Sinker. We'll see if we can get out of this wind because uh, it is always windy down here, or it seems to be. I think this should be good. Oh boy, that's a good fish actually. Yeah. That's oh. a good fish. There was a deep hole. Just cast into here, Stewie. Well, it didn't take long, Nick. No. Um, oh, I lost one. Oh, mate. I just let it drop back down. We're, uh, our skipper said you go from that rock to that rock and there should be some fish. Oh, look at this down here. Now, I'll walk over this way. Oh, he's just jumped. I'll swap your spots. Nick. Thank you very much. That's very kind. There were literally 50 nice But you can have a look in the water there. There you go. Acrobatic. You got one, Stewie? Yeah, Pretty. You got one. You're on two. You're on, Stewie. Okay, we'll get around the corner so we can think of one. Bear. There you go. Nice fish. Nice little Australian salmon. The question is can we keep them? The yep. answer is yes indeed. This area is famous for its salmon but also famous for this little fella. Yeah, and I'm on too, straight away. Salmonish, but that, just grabbing, is a pike. A rock pike specifically. There's another one. And there's another one, there's a few, few of that. Ah. <laughs> Have you got him? Such a fool. Yes, no. Come on, mate. Right. Come on. Oh, that's a good
All right, well, you've heard us talking about the captain, the man who's piloted us through these treacherous waters. It's Mr. Phil Pollard, a local abalone diver. Phil, welcome to Hook, Line and Sinker. Thanks, mate. Now, you've uh, chucked the anchor out here in this particular area. What are we hoping for? It's hoping for a couple of gummy sharks, but uh, like fishing, you can never guarantee it, but it has been a pretty good place lately. Now, you've uh, you've learnt the first rule of taking us fishing. No guarantees. They always say you can't guarantee anything. But I can see there's a channel here, a channel here, a bit of a, a, a convergence of food. It's a good area because you've got, um, as you said, the main channel coming in with the tide here, two other smaller channels running off either side, so it is a good spot to go fishing. Good spot to catch an abalone? No, actually there's no abalone living in here, but um, there's a few other varieties of fish we could target. Alright, well you won't see any abalone, you may see a gummy shark. All right, gummy sharks, gummy sharks. The rig we're going to be using, we're only shallow water, but there's a bit of current ripping through, so we need a bit of lead. Now, I'm using a uh, fire line, braid type line, so it basically means you don't need as much lead to get it down to the bottom because it's thinner. Running sinker rig, two hooks, like so, and I'm just going to use a bit of salmon, which you saw us catch earlier. I've just chopped a fillet off. In there. In there, look at that. So easy. We'll throw that out. We'll leave it in gear and we'll wait for a gummy to come and grab it. You look out for us. Throw that out there and away we go. Here we go. Stewie? Yes. What have you got, sir? We have a gummy shark. I've just. You were just winding your rod in to check your bait, weren't you? No, You've been no, neglecting no. it. You've been no, sitting no. there for how long? <laughs> You're no, a, a neglectful no fisherman, aren't you? No, You're telling me the gummy shark grabbed the boat on the way no up. way up, there's no oh, doubt about it. Whatever. All right, and you're uh, content to call it a gummy? Yeah, I've seen yeah, it. A gummy. I've seen There he is, it's a gummy, yeah, all right. They're not a, a bad fish, gummy. are they? Not a bad sport fish, shoot. Excellent. Excellent, they're fairly plentiful here, too. A lot of people, when you say, oh, I caught a good gummy shark, wouldn't be thinking it was a very meritorious catch, particularly, but um, they go all right. They're excellent. Yeah, they do go all right. Fish and they eat right pretty here. well. They certainly do. Well, if you eat flake in a fish and chip shop, this is what you're it's eating. a good one. Oh. Now we'll net him. There he is. There he is. There you go. There you go. Good work. I think that's cheating. Pop him out, Andrew. Quite frankly. You've got ten cast legs. No, you don't. <laughs> Grab this. Anyone that's never felt a shark before, that sandpaper-like skin. He's not that happy about being caught this little bloke, but uh, he's all right. What did he take, Stuart? He took a... You wouldn't piece know, it'd have been out there so long. <laughs> a piece of pilchard. Piece of pilchard. Now, have you ever seen gummy shark fishing like this, Nick? Well, certainly not in this depth of water, Andrew. No. Quality gummies, I mean. Yeah. See that? This thing. That's your fun. You know, that's great fun. And I'm quite happy to say that this one's a gummy rather than a stingray. Right. Do you getting... want to give me a hand, mate? Or... Yeah, well, no? Not really. No. Okay, that's alright. You're really working up there on the gummy station, Look aren't you? This for a nice shark. This is a Where what side are you coming with that shark? Oh, just here. here Look at go. that. Here you go. Now. Oh! Flake for two, boys. I've caught the bollard. Good, good. That's a good opportunity right. to do that. Yeah. Alright, oh, now I've got the gummy. Here we go, day. Look at that. Good <laughs> fish. Well done. Let's get right. out of there. Oh. <laughs> Have you got him? Such a fool. Yes, no. Come on, mate. Right. Come on. Now it's getting more. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. There he is. There's a gummy shark. And that's a Smithton gummy shark. And this is unbelievable fishing. It's just come on. And that bait was just out there. I guess, too, the, the water is shallow. We've mentioned that. I guess that's in our advantage because the gummies are here. You're throwing out big, juicy baits. And they don't seem to be having trouble finding it. No, they're certainly not. Not at the moment. Yeah, so that's it. Gummy shark fishing, folks. If you'd like to know a little more, Here's how you do it.
Do a bit bomb a bummy pop. <laughs> Get it? No teeth. Gummies are pretty easy to catch. Just use a big juicy bait like a salmon fillet. They'll bite most of the year round and in most of the state's waters. Just be sure to check the rules as some areas are shark nurseries. You've got a lot of credibility, Andrew, yes. And if you want information on fishing the far northwest, why not give Stewie Smith a call on 0407 522 319. It's all good advice. And Hardy, you're back on? I'm back on to another one, mate. I... Doesn't seem to be a gummy show. No, I doubt it's a gummy. I think it's another nice flathead. It is too. A little crocodile, a lizard. Look at that. Uh, and there you go, folks. Not bad, is it? Whether it's salmon, whether it's gummies, whether it's pike, flathead, it's all available down here at Smithton. It is. The, the wild west coast. And I suggest if you get a day that's not windy, and that is fairly common down here, they'd tell us. Yeah. Uh, Apparently they had one last year. <laughs> that's right, I remember that. It was on the news. <laughs> uh, yeah, fantastic spot. Beautiful spot around those islands. Magic country. It is. Great yeah. fishing. And uh, we've done all right today. We've had a fantastic day. You'll need to get that one off. And that's it. Just about wraps up another episode of the old show, Hook, Line and Sinker. We'll see you next week.